I'm Tom Adler and I'm at the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette with Arne Whalen, who has uh, several of his works in our permanent collection. And we're going to talk about those and a little bit about uh, uh, his other works as well. Happy to have you with me, Arnie. Thank you. Um, first of all, could you tell us a little bit about your background, maybe the kinds of things that affected your becoming an artist, choosing to become an artist? Well, I, I wanted to become a, a, a naturalist. And I okay. started drawing birds and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, plants and flowers and labeling them. And I, I was an advocate of a Deep River Jim's Wilderness Trail book <laughs> <laughs> with all the drawings on the side by Ernest Thomas Seton. No, that one, a different one, but Ernest Thomas Seton, if you know him, he's a Canadian artist and he wrote Probably for boys, know. Two Little Savages. Oh, okay. And he had a lot of pictures in the drawings on the side. And this, uh, you know, started me drawing. And I was drawing as a naturalist. I wanted to be a, I took biology and wanted to be a naturalist. So I was just learning the names of birds and the names of trees and things. Mm -hmm. That's how I started to draw. Mm -hmm. And did you have, you had formal training though as an artist eventually? Oh yes. I got to college, I just took biology because that was on my mind, but then there was an art department. So I went over there and the uh, one professor who was so engaging that he beguiled me. <laughs> I changed and became an, uh, an art major with a minor in, uh, actually, in chemistry eventually. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, in our permanent collection, we have three of your fairly recent pastels. We have Winter Silence, McKinley Place, and a Lily Pond with Curly Dock. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the style and the technique you use uh, in... in uh, creating those pastels? Yeah, but all three of those are very site-specific. I was up north of town. The one, the winter silence comes from what is now Prophetstown. Okay. Before they made it into a Prophetstown highways and all. It was mm -hmm. a nice little side road that did what it does in that painting. And uh, um, that was easy. What I started was I just draw a charcoal, um, powdered pigment, okay. rubbed the whole paint in a gray powdered pigment, mm. and, uh, and then erased, in the, in the erased trails and erased things with an eraser, and that paper that I was using, it worked well that way, and that was the others too. Uh, they start by putting a ground down, of one color, and then drawing into it and erasing, mm. and uh, that seemed to work. And then applying the, the pastel colors after yeah, that? Yeah, well, they sort of go with it, yes. Hmm. But it is, uh, in all of my works, there's a, uh, a ground color, mm -hmm. maybe two. Sometimes it's in the foreground, or the blue sky, or the gray sky, or whatever. And then drawing into that, it's like, like having colored paper, only mm -hmm. this is a, you do it yourself and put what you want in different areas, you put a different ground color. Now this technique is quite different from uh, what you did originally with oils and acrylics then. Yes. Yeah, Though I, the subject matter is similar. <laughs> I, uh, I was in oil and acrylics and uh, my dealer up in Chicago said, what we ought to have for these big paintings, these big acrylic paintings, is something smaller um, and pastel pa works on paper. And they would sell for around $750. Mm. I thought, wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And I had no experience in, in, soft, in pastels or powdered pigment, but it, I taught myself whatever I knew. Mm -hmm. I worked it out. Now your earlier works, it seems to me, are somewhat more impressionistic, bolder colors than, than in, in the, the earlier work in, the pastels? Early works, in, in In acrylics even. Oh yeah, yeah. it was different. I was, I was in... Uh, a lot of strong colors. And, yes. Um, quite different. I was doing a series on the tributaries of the Wabash, and uh, the gallery in Chicago sold a couple of those up there. Uh, but then she wanted some things to support them, smaller things, she said. Mm -hmm. So I got into the... Uh, my paper roll was 80 inches long, so when I roll mm. that out on my big table downtown in the studio, cut it in half, that's 40. So I'd take 40 inches by 26 or whatever, 
So that became the size. Mm -hmm. Now, I had one of your earlier uh, acrylics in my office, in one of my offices at Purdue, in those bold, the, the, the sort of blues and oranges and the gold of the wheat flat fields paint, and so forth. Pretty much flat. Yeah, yeah I had a, my first show at Purdue was in 1969, and Kurt Stocky, who was then a painter in our department, he looked at the, the show and he said, wallpaper. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was flat, flat, flat. Mm -hmm. at, there was a time, you know, when you didn't want to violate the picture plane. That was mm -hmm. part of the history of art and, uh, way back in the 19th, late 19th century. And I finally decided <laughs> I'll violate the picture plane <laughs> mm -hmm. by it, giving the impression of deep space. Mm -hmm. But yes. before, there was a time when I wasn't violating the picture plane. Mm -hmm. It was flat, flat, flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I can see with your, with your background in biology and chemistry and so forth this, that you are a naturalist, but are you hoping that uh, when, when people view your art that they're going to get a certain sense of man's relationship to nature? No, or? I have not my, my thought at all. Not your thought at all? No, I have no, no delusions about it. I just do it because I want to make a good picture. Just, a just something that's aesthetically compelling pleasing. Compelling picture. Compelling yeah, picture. That people like to look at. Like so you, you have no no certain notion of the content that you want to to No, to like the, <coughs> the two of them, they're the snowy, uh, what is it called? Winter uh, silence. Winter silence. That evokes what it says. Mm -hmm. It's really a silent picture. The stillness. Stillness, mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, picture of a road going into, what was it? Uh, McKinley Place. McKinley or? Place. That was interesting to me because this road went down and up again and into a mysterious sort of bunch of woods and there was mm -hmm. a place back in there and mm -hmm. a sign that said McKinley's. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, it just evokes a place, mm -hmm. a certain place. Mm -hmm. And it's, the, the mm -hmm. swamp one too, that was up further north and around on a, on a little lake. And uh, I liked that one because I was really kind of free with my Drawing Mona Berg like that one too, because uh, you know you draw a bunch of lines and it turns out to be <laughs> not leaves on a tree, but it was loose and free, mm -hmm. and good. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've had um, exhibitions and so forth, I suspect you've been asked to do an artist statement or some such. Um, do you remember any of the things that you've said about yourself as an artist in in any of those? Well, I and gave several talks, and I called it. Uh, the Odyssey of a Weed Painter. <laughs> so that's what I ended up as. But, but I started out, man, when I started in art <clears throat> after the war, in the art schools, Minneapolis Art Institute and Walker Art School, I had to go into two at the same time, <clears throat> they were still round and real, I mean, natural. Mm -hmm. But when I got back into art later and into graduate school, abstract expressionism had taken over to yes. become sort of academicism. Mm -hmm. And uh, to put a, <laughs> we stood back and threw the paint on the canvas. <laughs> if you came up with anything that resembled round and real, like a fence post, why well, was really gauche? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at at the University of Minnesota, I was doing um, some work there with sort of graduate work, <clears throat> and uh, Walter Quirt, who was fresh out of New York, he'd been chosen over. Uh, Jackson Pollock because mm. he had more of a record of showing things in New York. Both of them were alcoholics, <laughs> but Walter Quirt was less so, I guess, or they took their chances on him. But he took me aside one time and told me the, what the philosophy was behind abstract expressionism. He said, we've had two world wars, the world is going down the tubes, mm -hmm. and what we have to do is, is start a new renaissance. And you don't find it in the in the intellectual, or the reason, but in the intuitive and the subconscious. And uh, so he described what uh, an abstract expressionist painter does. Now, he just came out of New York where they talked about this a lot. Mm -hmm. and you you st stand back, look at this blank canvas, and you take a run at it, and you start throwing paint. And uh, then you come back and sit down and look at it a little bit. Then you exercise your mind some. But when you're up there, it's intuitive mm -hmm. and subconscious. You get at it again. <laughs> we had one kid at the University of Iowa who was so enthusiastic about that, he was throwing paint on the next guy. <laughs> he got 
scolded severely because mm. he was too, too uh, of much of an abstract expressionist. <laughs> Anyhow, I, after a while, trying to, he would say, put in the fourth dimension. Well, what in the fourth dimension? I know three dimensions. I learned later, I think, there's a kind of way you can talk about Picasso's uh, work in the fourth dimension, if you see it all differently, that's quite another story. But anyhow, the, the, the philosophy behind abstract expressionism, where they, they really uh, thought that they were going to do something for the world, like a mm -hmm. new renaissance is his expression. Well, um, dialectical materialism was really mm -hmm. dialectical materialism, and I thought, I'm not that. I believe okay. in God, the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. So I had nothing to do with that. I decided I'd mm -hmm. go back to the round and real. Mm -hmm. So I, I deliberately made a break there mm -hmm. in the uh, 60s or 70s, yeah, 70s, mm -hmm. 60s. Okay. And I quit trying <laughs> to, to bring on a new renaissance for the world. I didn't have any illusions of what a painter can do. Well, thanks very much for talking with us, Arnie, and helping us document our permanent collection. Okay, thank you.